What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with uh, this top 10 NBA coaching list. Uh, top 10 NBA coaches in history. Just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Um, just do a brief recap. At number 10, I had Bill Fitch. And at number 9, Lenny Wilkins. And at number 8, I have the late, great Chuck Daly. And I also want to say before I go forward that I will be starting my top 10 ABA players list. Now that we're uh, nearing the end of the NBA season, I have more time to focus on a lot of these video requests that are multiple parts. All right, now, Chuck Daly is probably best known, of course, for winning two NBA championships with the Bad Boy Pistons in the late 80s, early, early 1990s. And, of course, for being the head coach of the original Dream Team that won Olympic gold in Barcelona in 92. But his coaching career goes way beyond that, all the way back to high school uh, when he was very, very young. He was a young Chuck Daly. Um, but Chuck Daly was born in 1930 in Kane, Pennsylvania. His parents' names were Earl and Geraldine Daly. Uh, he attended Kane Area High School. Uh, he went to St. Bonaventure University for one year. And I believe St. Bonaventure, that's, that rings a bell. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the late, great Bob Lanier went there. Uh, but someone can fact check me on that one. But anyway, uh, Chuck Daly went to St. Bonaventure University for one year before transferring to Bloomberg University of Pennsylvania, where he graduated in 1952. After serving two years in the military, he began his basketball coaching career in 1955 when he was only 25 years old at Paxantani High, uh, Area High School in Paxantani, Pennsylvania. After compiling a 111 and 70 record in eight seasons at Paxantani High School, Daly moved on to the college level in 1963 as an assistant coach under Vic Bubba at Duke University. I think I pronounced his last name right, Bubaz. During his six seasons at Duke, the Blue Devils won the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship and advanced to the Final Four both in 1964 and 1966. Daly then replaced Bob Cousy as head coach at Boston College in 1969. The Eagles recorded an 11-13 record in Daly's first year at the school and improved to 15-11 in 1971. Daly became the head coach of the University of Pennsylvania in 1971, succeeding Dick Hodder. Penn won 20 or more games and captured the Ivy League title in each of his first four seasons, with Daly at the helm. The most successful campaign was his first in 1972, when the Quakers recorded a 25-3 record overall and 13-1 in their conference, and advanced to the NCAA East Regional Final, eventually losing, however, to North Carolina. An additional significant success for Daly was in 1979 when all five starters on Pennsylvania's Final Four team had initially been recruited by Daly. His overall record after six seasons at Penn was 125-38, and 74-10 within the Ivy League. As a matter of fact, looking at his coaching career in college, he was 151 and 62 overall. And uh, as an assistant coach in college, three times NCAA Final Four appearances, three times ACC Tournament Champion, four times ACC Regular Season Champion, four time Ivy League Champion as a head coach in college. And five-time Big uh, Five champion as a head coach in college. In 1978, Chuck Daly crossed over to the Pro Leagues when he joined the NBA's Philadelphia 76ers as an assistant coach. During the 1981 season, the Cleveland Cavaliers hired him as the third head coach that season. But he was fired with a 9-32 record before the season ended. 
He then returned to the 76ers as a broadcaster <clears throat> until he was hired in 1983 by the Detroit Pistons. When he had joined the Pistons as a head coach in 1983, they were not and had not been a really good franchise. Um, the Pistons had not recorded back-to-back -back winning seasons since the mid-1950s. And they were, even though Isaiah Thomas was a brilliant young player, they were still just a mediocre team when Chuck Dilley took over. However, starting almost immediately, the Pistons began to rise in the ranks. And um, in the years that Chuck Dilley was head coach of the Pistons, they made the playoffs every single season. And it was Chuck Daly that slowly began to change the identity of the Pistons. Um, even though Chuck Daly was this debonair, he had this image of the debonair uh, coach, him and Pat Riley. They, they, they had these immaculate suits. You know, Pat Riley had the slick back hair. Chuck Daly had the hair perfectly quaffed. Looking like a mob boss sometimes, you know what I mean? But beneath the style was grit, substance, a blue-collar mentality, uh, you know, with Chuck Daly. And um, the team began to change his identity. I think when he took over, Detroit was not known for their defense. I think they were more of an offensive team. But then by the mid-80s, you saw the changes and, and the moves that would lead to them becoming a powerhouse. They acquired Adrian Dantley in a trade. Um, they acquired in the, the, the draft in 85, Joe Dumars. Then the very next year, they get Dennis Rodman. They get uh, John Spider Sally. They get Rick Mahorn, uh, I think via free agency, I think it was, and now you're getting the pieces that led to the bad boys. And by 1987, they reached the conference finals. And they're within grasp of overtaking Boston as the kings of the East. But if it wasn't for that blunder by Isaiah Thomas in Game 5, the Larry Bird steal, they probably would have went on to beat Boston. But then in 1988, uh, they go to the NBA Finals. They fight tooth and nail against the Lakers, only to lose in Game 7, a, 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 a series that most people outside of L.A. will tell you they thought Detroit was the better team. But L.A. Prevere, uh, persevered and, and prevailed. But in 1989, they would not be denied. They swept the Boston Celtics in the first round in '89. Even though you know, even though Larry Bird was injured, but still they swept the Boston Celtics. They swept the Milwaukee Bucks. They beat the Chicago Bulls in six. The Bulls were the only team to beat the Pistons in that playoffs. And then in the and then in uh, the NBA Finals, even though the Lakers were without Magic Johnson for the most part and without Byron Scott. They swept the Lakers and won their first ever NBA championship. 1990, they were almost as dominant. They won 59 games. And, and even though the Bulls were able to push them to a seventh game in the Eastern Conference Finals, ultimately they prevailed at home at Auburn Hills, 93-74. And they go, would go on to defeat the Portland Trail Blazers for their second consecutive NBA championship. While serving as a Pistons coach, Chuck Bay was also a color commentator for TBS's NBA playoff coverage. Daly also, as I just mentioned, not only won back-to-back -back championships, went to uh, three consecutive NBA finals and he would also go to five consecutive 
uh, Eastern Conference Championships. 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91. Daly was named head coach of the U.S. Dream Team that won the Olympic gold at the 1992 Olympics before moving his NBA career on to the New Jersey Nets for the 92-93 season. Uh, Daly stayed with the Nets for two more seasons before uh, resigning over frustration over the immaturity of some of the players on his team. And no doubt about it, um, the tragic death of Drazen Petrovic more than likely uh, cast the appall over that team. I often wonder if Drazen Petrovic had lived, how would the NBA landscape would have changed? I'm not saying <coughs> that Drazen would have had a career like you know Larry Bird or Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan, but what I'm saying is Drazen Petrovic was a significant enough player that on any particular roster, as close as some of those series were, a player of his caliber could have been a difference between winning and losing. Like, for instance, what if Drazen Petrovic was, say, a guard on the Houston Rockets uh, in the late 90s instead of, say, uh, Brent Price? You know what I mean? What if, or Matt Maloney, what if he was on that team? You know, we could be having a different conversation about Charles Barkley. But anyway, Daly again took up a role as a color commentator for TNT's NBA coverage during the mid-1990s. Daly rejected an offer to coach the New York Knicks during the summer of 1995 after Pat Riley uh, resigned after deciding he was not ready for the NBA coaching grind. He would return to coaching with the Orlando Magic at the beginning of the 1997-98 season. Um, Daly stayed two seasons with the Magic and then retired permanently after the abbreviated 1999 season. It was after Chuck Daly's retirement that Doc Rivers got his first coaching gig with the Orlando Magic. And I think it was in 1999-2000 season when uh, Doc Rivers won Coach of the Year. And I believe Doc Rivers was the first coach to give future Hall of Famer Ben Wallace any meaningful minutes. Uh, on an NBA team, I think he debuted with the, the the Wizards, but the first team that he got real meaningful minutes with was Orlando. As an NBA head coach, Chuck Daly went 638 and 437 with a 59.3% win percentage. Two-time NBA champion, uh, NBA All-Star Game coach in 1990. He was voted a top 10 coach in the history of the NBA back in 1998 and top 15 coach in NBA history just a couple of years ago. His number two is retired by the Detroit Pistons, uh, one of the great coaches of all times. Unfortunately, Chuck Daly is no longer with us. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer back in March of 2009. There was news that saddened all of us when we read about it. Because we know, uh, th those of us who know about the deadly disease, how fatal it is. Um, it's very curable if diagnosed early enough. The only problem with pancreatic, pancreatic cancer is that by the time you get symptoms of it, it's already in this advanced stage. Uh, matter of fact, most of the people who survive pancreatic cancer, it's usually discovered by accident. It's usually someone who's undergoing surgery for something else and the doctor happens to see the beginning stages of pancreatic cancer and, it, and it's very curable. I think it's almost 100% curable if it's caught early enough, but it's just usually not. Um, unfortunately, on May 9th, 2009, Chuck Daly passed away at the age of 78. And he's buried at Riverside Memorial Park in Tequesta, Florida. But his legacy as an all-time great coach could not be denied. He's still a, a very respected figure in the NBA annals of history and, and players who played <clears throat> for him, whether you're talking about uh, in, uh, in today's world, those who played with him, uh, played for him, uh, with the Pistons or even with the Nets, uh, excuse me, the Nets or 
the magic of those who knew him in the NBA family. And because of his influence, there's an award that's named after him. It's called the Chuck Daly Lifetime Achievement Award. And Chuck Daly is a two-time Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. He was inducted in 1994 for his individual coaching career. And just one year after his passing, he was posthumously inducted as the head coach of the Dream Team. Chuck Daly, number eight on my all-time coaches list.